I vow to bring my father's M15 to school. A 15-year-old Florida boy's alleged threat to shoot up a school, read by the police officer arresting him, his mother is standing by his side. But he's just a little kid playing a video game. This case, one of several alleged close calls in just the past few days. He talks about how he wants to die, and when he dies, he wants to kill 100 people, and at least 100 people want to have fun doing it. Multiple alleged would-be mass shooters all arrested by law enforcement before they could carry out their deadly plans. Body cam video recording one of the dramatic takedowns. Do you have any uh, weapons we need to know about? Potential tragedies averted just weeks after gunmen in El Paso and Dayton left 31 dead. Suspects in Connecticut, Florida, and Ohio all thwarted due to tips from the public. And we always encourage that anytime somebody has information, you know, bring it forward to the police. The Connecticut suspect released a statement saying, in part, that he had no intention of committing a mass shooting. As the country struggles with an increase in mass shootings, a clear picture is emerging. Some of these killings are being plotted or carried out by white supremacists. The U.S. has experienced a significant increase in violent activity by individuals and groups of individuals who believe in the white supremacist ideology. The director of the FBI acknowledging as much last month. A majority of the um domestic terrorism uh, cases that we've investigated uh, are motivated by some version of what you might call white supremacist violence. But the issue has so far been limited. Not only has funding been decreased, but the U.S. government, through its anti-immigration and immigration enforcement priorities, uh, have actually played right into the ideological agenda of the white supremacist movement. To help fill the void, nonprofits have stepped in to play watchdog, keeping an eye on online hate groups. So this is our heat map. Which, which means? It, which means hate, extremism, anti-Semitism, and terror. So it allows us to track in real time hate crimes wherever they're happening across the country. Well, if this is an indication of hate crimes, yeah. we're in a bad place right now. We are. I mean, we've seen some pretty alarming trends in recent years. Last year, the FBI reports a 17% increase in hate crimes overall. At their headquarters in New York, the Anti-Defamation League monitors and tracks extremist ideology all over the country. I found this one guy. He seemed to be threatening acts of mass violence toward women. And we're trying to figure out more about who he is and where he's from. And what will you do with that information? If we think it's a credible threat, we'll pass it on to law enforcement. But even with complex monitoring algorithms and a vigilant team watching constantly for potential threats, people regularly fall through the cracks. People like James Reardon Jr., arrested days ago for allegedly threatening a mass shooting at this Ohio Jewish community center. The 20-year-old self-described white supremacist from New Middletown, Ohio, appeared to be a normal kid to local reporter Greg Graziosi, who has met with Reardon several times. And he seemed like a nice kid that was you know, politically engaged. When I saw him when he got older, it wasn't just political engagement anymore. It was ideological. Reardon even attended the 2017 Charlottesville Unite the Right rally, seen here in this National Geographic documentary. I want a homeland for white people. He was happy to be associated with essentially, you know, white supremacy. But he seemed to only get law enforcement's attention after posting this disturbing video on Instagram, showing himself firing a semi-automatic weapon, seemingly acting out his plan to kill. The caption on the post sounding like the way a report might cover his attack. Police identify the Youngstown Jewish family community shooter as a local white nationalist. The post also tagged the location of his alleged intended target. The FBI raiding Reardon's house, where they say they found a large collection of semi-automatic rifles, dozens of rounds of ammunition, a gas mask, and bulletproof armor. He was taken into custody on local harassment and aggravated menacing charges. Reardon has pleaded not guilty. White supremacy is an ideology based on the belief that white people of European descent are intellectually and physically superior to non-whites. But more importantly, the ideology calls for action. I've never met a white supremacist with positive self-esteem. Christian Picciolini became the self-proclaimed white supremacist as a teenager in the late 1980s, starting a white power rock band seen in this HBO documentary, Skinhead USA, Soldiers of the Race War. 
and sharing his philosophy on CNN in 1992. Well, I believe we're warriors today and we're fighting for a great cause, which is the white race. He says the white supremacist movement has gained momentum, attracting new recruits with a euphemism, white nationalists, to literally whitewash their hateful ideology. Nobody really likes to be associated with white supremacy out in the open. Uh, so they come up with terms like white nationalist or alt-right to make themselves sound a little bit more palatable. Picciolini says he abandoned white supremacy in his early 20s and now works to disengage youth from extremist ideology. I can tell you that the antidote is not more alienation. It is not pushing them further away. We have to intercept these people before they get so desperate that they have to latch onto an ideology. In the wake of the El Paso shooting, President Trump expressing his distaste for hate in general. I am concerned about the rise of any group of hate. I don't like it. And tasking the Justice Department with targeting social media. I am directing the Department of Justice to work in partisan partnership with local, state, and federal agencies, as well as social media companies to develop tools that can detect mass shooters before they strike. But Democrats say the Trump administration has systematically cut back on resources used to address threats from domestic extremists. I think President Trump isn't doing enough. He's hollowed out the department that is in charge of actually preventing these mass terror attacks uh, that are launched domestically by groups that uh, often are spewing hate, white supremacy. We deserve a president who is brave. Presidential candidate and U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand says the Department of Justice should infiltrate white supremacy groups. What was recommended after 9-11 is that our FBI, our CIA, and our local law enforcement work together with command centers where all data, all information is shared in real time. And that kind of partnership between local and federal law enforcement does work. Earlier this month, the Las Vegas Joint Terrorism Task Force, along with federal authorities, arrested this 23-year-old self-described neo-Nazi who was allegedly plotting to bomb a Las Vegas synagogue or gay bar. The man seen here in this 2016 video from affiliate KTNV patrolling his neighborhood with an AR-15 and dozens of bullets. I have my Bushmaster AR-15 rifle. Investigators say a search of his home turned up illegal guns, bomb-making materials, and a notebook outlining plans for attacks. What year was this picture taken? 1963. Battling white supremacy is neither new or easy. Dr. King, Robert Kennedy. This picture from the 1960s hangs in the ADL's New York office. Another dark time in American history, where leaders found the courage and conviction to lead. There's no sort of silver bullet that will stop this threat. We've got to realize that it takes an all-hands-on-deck effort. ABC News learning tonight, authorities have recently stopped what they say were two more potential mass shootings.